Mike Tyson is legendary for many reasons. The face tattoo, the biting off of Evander Holyfield's ear, oh, and all of the knockouts. Iron, Mike Tyson, is one of the top heavyweight boxers to ever step foot into the ring. He is also legendary for his prolific spending. At the peak of his career, he's estimated to have made an astonishing $430 million from fights and endorsement deals, which is an incredible $700 million when adjusted for inflation. For mere mortals, that money should have been enough to set someone up for life by a factor of 10. Unfortunately for Mike, he blew the entire fortune away. Every single last dollar. Here's how Mike Tyson did it. Tyson's humble beginnings. Tyson spent his childhood in Brownsville, one of New York's most dangerous neighborhoods during the 1970s. The area was deeply affected by poverty and was in the grip of an economic downturn that led to widespread urban decay. Every day, shootings, stabbings, and muggings were common occurrences, with criminal gangs like the Black Spades exerting their control over the streets. As a young boy who was smaller than most and had a high-pitched voice, Tyson was an easy target for bullies. He endured relentless taunts and brutal beatings from towering bullies who mockingly called him Fairy Boy. Tyson recalled feeling terrified even to walk to the store alone. To escape the constant torment, he started skipping school and wandered the streets of Brownsville, seeking validation through acts of violence and petty crime. By the age of 13, Tyson had already been arrested numerous times, and it seemed like Brownsville was on the verge of claiming another lost soul, discovered at Tryon Gym. When Tyson was 13 years old, his life took a significant turn when he was introduced to boxing by a social worker named Bobby Stewart. Stewart operated a boxing gym called the Tryon School for Boys Club, where he used the sport to provide troubled youth with an outlet and instill discipline. Upon witnessing Tyson's first bouts, Stewart recognized his innate talent. Tyson displayed remarkable speed and fluidity in his punches, demonstrating skills beyond his years. Impressed by Tyson's potential, Stewart introduced him to the renowned boxing manager Constantine Cus D'Amato, who became Tyson's legal guardian and mentor. Under D'Amato's guidance, Tyson committed himself wholeheartedly to honing his boxing skills. D'Amato focused on refining Tyson's powerful punching technique and defensive maneuvers. Reflecting on his training with D'Amato, Tyson remarked, Cus wanted the meanest fighter that God ever created, and he got me. Representing Tryon, Tyson quickly rose to prominence, showcasing remarkable talent. At the young age of 15, he secured a junior Olympic gold medal in 1981, displaying formidable power in the ring. By the time he turned 16, Tyson had amassed an impressive amateur record of over 100 victories with only six losses. I always believed that one day I would become the champion, thanks to my skills and determination, declared Tyson, exuding confidence as a teenager. Guided by D'Amato, who instilled in him the mindset of a champion, Tyson embraced his destined path with unwavering conviction. On his 18th birthday in 1982, Tyson embarked on his professional boxing journey in earnest. Promoter Don King took notice of the rising star known as Kid Dynamite, who swiftly dispatched opponents with ease. In less than three years, Tyson dominated 26 opponents, with 23 victories coming by knockout. Despite being smaller in stature at 5'11", Tyson overwhelmed seasoned heavyweights with astonishing aggression and skill, earning admiration from commentators for his exceptional composure and punching ability. Tragedy struck in November 1985 when D'Amato passed away, leaving behind a legacy that Tyson would carry forward. Despite the loss of his mentor, Tyson remained steadfast in his determination to fulfill D'Amato's vision. On November 22, 1986, at the age of 20, Tyson faced off against WBC champion Trevor Burbick in Las Vegas. 
Remarkably, it took Tyson only two explosive rounds to claim the title, making him the youngest heavyweight champion in history at just 20 years and four months old. Tyson's aggressive fighting style, honed on the streets of Brooklyn, was cultivated and perfected under D'Amato's guidance. This transformation enabled Tyson to transcend his troubled past and ascend to the pinnacle of boxing greatness within a remarkably short period. Reflecting on his journey, Tyson once remarked, I knew how to hurt people because I was hurt myself. During his prime, Tyson epitomized the intimidating presence and devastating punching power that characterized his amateur days. His ferocious demeanor and unmatched strength earned him a reputation as one of the most feared and respected boxers of any era. Despite the controversies that later surrounded his career, Tyson's humble beginnings serve as a testament to his resilience and determination as he rose from underdog to boxing legend. Tyson's Turbulent Path to Fame Despite Tyson's rapid ascent in the world of boxing, his journey was riddled with challenges and setbacks. Coming of age in a perilous neighborhood left a lasting imprint on Tyson, shaping his aggressive mindset and presenting him with personal hurdles that persisted into adulthood. Even as Tyson's professional career flourished, his tumultuous behavior outside the ring occasionally spilled over into the public eye. His marriage to Robin Givens in 1988 ended in a highly publicized divorce marked by allegations of domestic violence, reflecting Tyson's struggles with controlling his temper. Additionally, Tyson found himself involved in street altercations and other public incidents, further highlighting his volatility. Many attributed Tyson's erratic behavior to the absence of guidance following the death of his mentor, Cus D'Amato. D'Amato had served as a stabilizing force in Tyson's life, keeping him focused on his boxing career and shielding him from distractions. Without D'Amato's guidance, Tyson grappled with the pressures of fame and scrutiny, particularly at such a young age. Nevertheless, Tyson managed to harness his inner turmoil and channel it into his aggressive boxing style. Rather than succumbing to his personal demons, Tyson's struggles seemed to fuel his ferocity in the ring. Reflecting on his tumultuous journey, Tyson acknowledged the transformative power of boxing, stating, It took my mind off the streets. If I hadn't found boxing, I wouldn't have made it. Iron Mike makes millions. Tyson's meteoric rise in the boxing world catapulted him to legendary status, earning him the monikers Iron Mike and Kid Dynamite. His dominance in the ring was unparalleled, evident from his remarkable streak of winning his first 19 professional fights by knockout, with an astounding 12 of those victories coming within the first round. As Tyson's prowess in the ring grew, so did his financial worth. In 1987, he secured one of the most lucrative contracts in boxing history, signing a staggering $27 million eight-fight deal with HBO. Adjusted for inflation, this hefty sum translates to approximately $73.8 million in today's currency, showcasing the magnitude of Tyson's earning power during that era. However, Tyson's financial windfall didn't stop there. In 1990, he solidified his status as one of the highest-paid athletes of his time by penning a groundbreaking long-term pay-per-view contract with Showtime. This extraordinary deal was valued at a jaw-dropping $120 million, which adjusted for inflation amounts to an astonishing $286.4 million in 2024 money. This unprecedented contract not only underscored Tyson's immense popularity, but also cemented his position as a major force in the world of sports and entertainment, behind bars. In a dramatic turn of events, Tyson faced the first defeat of his illustrious career in 1990, a moment that sent shockwaves through the boxing world. The unexpected loss came at the hands of underdog Buster Douglas, who pulled off a stunning upset against the reigning heavyweight champion. This defeat not only marked a significant setback for Tyson, but also served as a sobering reminder of the unpredictable nature of professional sports. Tragically, Tyson's career was marred by another devastating blow the following year, when he found himself embroiled in a legal battle that would tarnish his reputation and alter the course of his life. 
In 1991, Tyson was arrested and charged with rape, a highly publicized case that sent shockwaves throughout the world. Subsequently, in 1992, Tyson was convicted of the crime and sentenced to serve time in prison. For three years, Tyson was incarcerated, his freedom stripped away as he grappled with the consequences of his actions. The image of a handcuffed Mike Tyson being escorted by police officers at the Montgomery County Courthouse in Rockville, Maryland, serves as a stark reminder of the tumultuous period in Tyson's life. It symbolizes the fall from grace of a once invincible boxing icon, whose legal troubles thrust him into the harsh glare of the public spotlight. Despite his fame and fortune, Tyson found himself facing the consequences of his actions, grappling with the reality of incarceration and the stigma of being labeled a convicted felon. Money woes. Tyson's troubles extended beyond his time in prison. In 2003, just a few years after regaining his freedom, the former sports icon found himself filing for bankruptcy protection. According to reports from that period, Tyson was facing a staggering $23 million debt, which, adjusted for inflation, equates to approximately $38.5 million in today's currency. Among his creditors, the IRS loomed large, with Tyson owing a substantial $13.4 million today in back taxes. So let's delve into how Mike Tyson managed to squander his once vast fortune, 50,000 square foot Connecticut mansion. In 1996, Mike Tyson made headlines when he purchased a sprawling mansion located at 50 Poplar Hill Drive in Farmington, Connecticut. Spanning an impressive 51,000 square feet and nestled on 17 acres of land, the mansion boasted opulent features befitting a boxing legend. However, the property's history was marred by legal troubles even before Tyson's ownership. Originally constructed in 1985 by a realtor, the mansion's builder later faced legal repercussions, pleading guilty to fraud and receiving a nine-year prison sentence. Subsequently, in 1992, the property fell into foreclosure and was acquired by a bank through auction for $3.5 million. A subsequent sale in 1993 saw the mansion change hands once more before Tyson acquired it in 1996 for $2.8 million. Tyson spared no expense in transforming the mansion into a lavish retreat. He invested millions in renovations, adding extravagant amenities such as a nightclub capable of accommodating 1,000 guests, an indoor gym, a shooting range, over 100 phone extensions, and an NBA regulation size basketball court. However, amidst personal turmoil, including a divorce and financial woes culminating in a bankruptcy filing in 2003, Tyson's prized mansion became entangled in legal proceedings. As part of his divorce settlement with ex-wife Monica Turner, the property was awarded to her. Turner later sold the mansion to rapper 50 Cent in 2003 for $4.1 million. However, financial challenges eventually led 50 Cent to file for bankruptcy in July 2015. Despite efforts to maintain the property, including substantial monthly expenditures on utilities and maintenance totaling $70,000, 50 Cent struggled to sustain ownership. After years of fluctuating market conditions and price reductions, 50 Cent finally sold the mansion in April 2019 for $2.9 million, marking the end of a turbulent chapter for the luxurious estate. Plush pads. However, one luxurious mansion wasn't sufficient for the extravagant tastes of the renowned sports star, Mike Tyson, who boasted an extensive portfolio of plush properties. Among his notable acquisitions was an elegant estate located in Ohio, characterized by its luxurious amenities, including a basketball court, a pristine swimming pool, and even cages to house his infamous pet tigers. However, financial difficulties prompted Tyson to part ways with this lavish property, ultimately selling it for $1.1 million in 1999, equivalent to approximately $2 million in today's currency. Additionally, Tyson had previously owned a magnificent mansion in Maryland, which he shared with his then-wife, Monica Turner. 
Acquired in 1995, the property epitomized luxury with its seven spacious bedrooms, state-of-the-art gymnasium, various sports courts, and a stunning swimming pool. Tyson and Turner enjoyed many years in this luxurious abode until their divorce in 2003, at which point ownership of the mansion was transferred to Turner as part of their settlement. Mansion Maintenance Owning multiple luxurious mansions may seem like a dream come true, but it's not all about glitz and glamour. With each opulent property comes a hefty price tag for maintenance and upkeep. In the mid-90s, Tyson found himself shelling out a staggering $300,000 annually just for lawn care and garden maintenance across his various estates. Adjusted for inflation, this amounts to approximately $564,000 in today's currency. Such exorbitant expenses demonstrate that the lavish lifestyle of owning multiple mansions comes with significant financial responsibilities beyond the initial purchase price. Cell phone costs. During the zenith of his career, Tyson encountered another substantial expense, cell phone and pager costs, a quintessential aspect of the 90s era. Between 1995 and 1997, Tyson found himself forking out a whopping $230,000 annually on these telecommunications expenses alone, which, when adjusted for inflation, translates to approximately $433,000 in today's currency. These six-figure bills weren't just for Tyson's personal use. They reportedly encompassed mobile phones and phone plans that he generously provided for his extensive network of friends, family, and staff members. Car Collection Tyson's passion for cars extended to owning an impressive fleet, with reports suggesting he acquired a staggering total of 111 vehicles throughout his lifetime. Among these automotive treasures was a rare gem, a limited-edition Bentley Continental SC worth a cool $500,000. With only 73 of these elite cars ever produced, Tyson's possession of one added to its exclusivity. Additionally, his collection boasted a lineup of Lamborghinis, Ferraris, a Mercedes-Benz 500, a Range Rover, and a 1995 Rolls-Royce, albeit the latter met an unfortunate end when Tyson totaled it in an accident. In an unexpected turn of events, instead of retrieving the wrecked Rolls-Royce, Tyson opted to gift it to the auto repair garage where it was left. Notorious for his generous spirit, Tyson frequently lent out his cars to friends, often losing track of where they ended up or to whom they were loaned. This led to scenarios where members of his entourage were dispatched on missions to locate the missing vehicles. One standout gem in Tyson's extensive car collection was his Ferrari F50, a vehicle of considerable significance. Bearing the chassis number 104220, this particular model completed production on February 13, 1996. Despite its significance, in 2001, a couple of years before Tyson declared bankruptcy, owing $23 million in debt, he sold his prized F50 to a tech entrepreneur. Fast forward to August 2022, after passing through several hands, the same F-50 commanded a staggering price of $4.6 million at an auction, solidifying its status as a coveted collector's item, Tiger King. In addition to his extravagant car collection, Mike Tyson made headlines for his ownership of three Bengal Tigers during the 1990s and early 2000s. The former heavyweight champion housed these majestic creatures in a specially constructed enclosure within his estate. Each of Tyson's Bengal Tigers came with a hefty price tag of $70,000 apiece, a figure that translates to approximately $154,000 in today's currency. However, the initial cost of acquiring these exotic pets was just the tip of the iceberg in terms of expenses. Tyson reportedly allocated a staggering $200,000 annually to cover the cost of feeding his beloved tigers, ensuring they received the highest quality care and nutrition. Additionally, he invested another $125,000 each year to hire an experienced animal trainer responsible for their well-being and handling, 
In today's monetary value, these expenses amount to approximately $440,400 and $275,300, respectively. Pet pigeons. In addition to his Bengal tigers, Mike Tyson's ownership of an extensive collection of racing pigeons has also drawn attention. The former boxing champion once disclosed that he possessed over 3,000 of these birds, although it's believed that he now owns a reduced number, estimated to be closer to 1,000. Tyson's passion for pigeons dates back to his childhood, as he cared for these birds even before embarking on his boxing career. Housing them in a meticulously designed cage, Tyson developed a deep connection with his pigeons, claiming that he could distinguish most of them individually. Reports from Essentially Sports suggest that Tyson spared no expense in building his pigeon collection, spending as much as $3,000 on each bird. With such a substantial investment, Tyson's total expenditure on his pigeon hobby amounted to an impressive $400,000. Bling bling. In addition to his lavish spending on cars, homes, and exotic pets, Mike Tyson's penchant for luxury extended to his wardrobe and accessories. Reports suggest that during the peak of his spending spree, the flashy star allocated an astounding $100,000 each month on jewelry and clothing, adorning himself with bling worth millions. One notable instance of Tyson's extravagant shopping habits occurred in 2000 during a visit to a London jewelry store. In a single spree, Tyson splurged a staggering $600 on luxury items, including a diamond watch, bracelet, and a pair of pocket watches from Graf Diamonds. However, Tyson's shopping escapade didn't end on a smooth note. Graf Diamonds later filed a lawsuit against the boxing icon when he failed to settle the substantial bill. Fortunately, the dispute was eventually resolved amicably, although it serves as a testament to Tyson's extravagant lifestyle during his heyday. Hey, big spender. In addition to his extravagant shopping sprees, Mike Tyson was known for orchestrating some seriously opulent events. In 1996, the flamboyant star spared no expense for his 30th birthday bash, which took place at his sprawling Connecticut mansion. The lavish affair cost Tyson a jaw-dropping $410,000, 808K today, and saw a star-studded guest list that included notable figures like Jay-Z, Donald Trump, and Oprah Winfrey. Recalling the extravagant celebration in his 2014 autobiography, Undisputed Truth, Tyson reminisced, We had 13 different chefs, each one cooking in their own kitchen. There was a guy hand-rolling cigars. You entered the house on an actual red carpet. Once you got past the 40 big Fruit of Islam bodyguards stationed outside. Apart from his penchant for luxury shopping and extravagant parties, Tyson reportedly allocated a monthly allowance of $240,000 for walking around money. This discretionary fund was used for impromptu purchases as well as for showering friends and family with extravagant gifts, splashing out. Arguably, one of Mike Tyson's most extravagant purchases was the luxurious gold bathtub he gifted to his then-wife, actress Robin Givens, as a lavish Christmas present back in 1988. The opulent bathtub, made entirely of 24-karat gold, came with a staggering price tag of $2.2 million, $6 million today, showcasing Tyson's penchant for indulgence and grand gestures. Unfortunately, the fairy tale romance between Tyson and Givens was short-lived, as they separated just a year after Tyson's extravagant gift. Following their split, Tyson decided to part ways with the decadent bathtub, eventually selling it for $1.2 million. Despite recouping a portion of the investment, Tyson still faced a substantial loss of approximately $1 million on the extravagant purchase. Rehab Costs In a candid revelation during a 2022 appearance on the Pivot podcast, Mike Tyson disclosed that he had depleted the last of his fortune on rehab to combat his struggles with drug addiction. 
Reflecting on his financial journey, Tyson shared, My last million dollars were spent on my rehabilitation because of the approximately 500 million that I made as a boxer. I had nothing left. Tyson's admission shed light on the tumultuous period marked by his lavish spending habits, which ultimately led to the depletion of his substantial earnings. It all went crazy and lasted between 15 and 16 years. It seemed like a lot of money, but eventually it was gone, he added, reflecting on the rapid decline of his wealth over the years. Come back, kid. Despite officially retiring from professional boxing in 2005, Mike Tyson has embarked on a remarkable journey to rebuild his fortune. Presently, he is estimated to be worth an impressive $10 million, a testament to his resilience and entrepreneurial endeavors. One of the key contributors to Tyson's financial resurgence is his successful venture into the cannabis industry with the Tyson Ranch business. Leveraging his brand and expertise, Tyson has capitalized on the booming market for legalized marijuana, carving out a lucrative niche for himself. In addition to his business ventures, Tyson has also expanded his portfolio through appearances in blockbuster movies, further bolstering his earnings. Notable among these is his role in the hit film The Hangover and the iconic Rocky Balboa. Most recently, Tyson graced the screen in the 2023 Amazon Prime action movie Medellin, reaffirming his status as a sought-after talent in the entertainment industry. Through strategic career moves and savvy investments, Tyson has not only revitalized his financial standing, but also solidified his legacy as a multifaceted personality beyond the realm of boxing. Viva Las Vegas In the present day, Mike Tyson resides in a luxurious Mediterranean-style villa nestled in the heart of Las Vegas, a city known for its opulence and extravagance. Purchased in 2015 for a hefty sum of $2.5 million, this stunning property serves as Tyson's elegant retreat from the bustling world outside. Although it may not boast the grandeur of his former Connecticut mansion, Tyson's Las Vegas abode exudes sophistication and charm in its own right. With six spacious bedrooms, including a lavish suite complete with a step-in bathtub and a private balcony, Every corner of the villa exudes comfort and luxury. The allure of Tyson's Vegas estate extends beyond the confines of its interior, as its sprawling grounds offer an array of amenities designed for relaxation and entertainment. A picturesque, lagoon-like swimming pool beckons residents to take a refreshing dip, while a rejuvenating hot tub provides the perfect spot to unwind after a long day. For those who enjoy outdoor gatherings, a BBQ area sets the stage for delightful culinary experiences amidst the desert landscape. Mike Tyson's Heirs Despite his resurgence in wealth, Mike Tyson disclosed in a recent interview on the Pivot podcast that he has no intention of leaving behind a financial inheritance for his six children. Tyson elaborated on his decision— emphasizing that he believes providing his children with a substantial sum of money would ultimately do them a disservice. Rather than relying on inherited wealth, Tyson is committed to instilling in his children the values of resilience, perseverance, and hard work. In Tyson's view, bestowing his children with a large inheritance would hinder their ability to navigate life's challenges independently. Instead, he aims to empower them to overcome adversity through their own efforts and determination. By prioritizing the importance of diligence and faith, Tyson hopes to equip his children with the essential tools needed to thrive in the face of obstacles. Rather than material wealth, Tyson seeks to leave behind a legacy of resilience and self-reliance for his beloved offspring. As we reflect on Mike Tyson's tumultuous journey, from rags to riches and back again, we're reminded of the complexities of fame, fortune, and the human spirit. Despite the highs and lows, Tyson's resilience and determination have left an indelible mark on the world of boxing and beyond. Now we invite you to share your thoughts. 
Do you agree with Tyson's decision not to leave an inheritance for his children? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed learning about how Mike Tyson lives in 2024, don't forget to like and subscribe for more captivating content. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.